welcome to the Shooting the Q podcast, presented by Heath Riles Barbecue, with tips, tricks, and an inside look with some of the top pit masters in the game. Now here's your host, Heath Riles. Welcome back to Shooting the Q. Today, of course, we're joined with my lovely wife, Candace. How are you doing today, huh? I'm good. And our good friend, Bobby T. Bob Trud, like stud. Knack. You got it. Finally. That's it. Finally. How you doing, brother? I've only known you for, what, 20 years? Uh, 22, but who's counting? Exactly. I mean, I know I'm a better friend. You're, you're not bad. Candace, how are you? I'm great. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look, man, it's always good when we can get you to come down and see us. And, you know, you're in town this week visiting and uh, for a little function we're having. And uh, I just wanted to get you in, have you on the podcast, yeah. and let let everybody kind of hear your story to me. Absolutely. You know, we met years ago, and I just want everybody to know, who is Bob? Yeah. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Okay. Well, uh, born and raised Pennsylvania, um, 53 years old. I've been in barbecue business for, is this like a, However I'm, not, you I'm not interviewing for a date, right? It's not, I mean, it's it kind of sounded like the way you're pitching it, but I didn't. <laughs> I know you're married to a lovely woman oh, named Tammy ama- that'll cut your throat. She's amazing. <laughs> uh, she'll cut my throat with a spoon, actually. Yeah, with a spoon. But she's an amazing woman. Um, no, I've been in the barbecue business for 23 years, and my, uh, I got into the barbecue business through the Barbecue Guru Company way back when. Uh, Shotgun Fred Perkle out of San Antonio, Texas, was my mentor. He, you know, I always loved cooking. I grew up in an Italian family, loved to cook, loved to make food for the masses, Got into barbecue, and we started that company and became competition guys, and just the passion rolled through that. Um, worked my way up through the company, started a sauce and rub business, started a barbecue catering business, um, teach classes all around the country, around the world. It's every aspect of my life is barbecue, and it's just been an amazing journey. So would you say that, um, him being your mentor, Shotgun yeah. Fred, he's kind of got you into the barbecue arena, I guess? Yeah, absolutely. I think that I didn't realize what barbecue was uh, as far as an industry until I met Fred. And, um, you know, we realized there was a market for product, and it's product we were building, temperature controls. And it really opened my eyes to a whole new world of you know, this, this barbecue industry, I had no idea. It was so huge. So it was really nice to kind of build this product, introduce it to people, um, have people look at it and say, oh yeah, we can use this. And, you know, it was just shocking to me that it was so broad. Um, and it's been growing ever since. And it's just really nice to be in. So do you think that it was kind of a new world to you just because, and I don't mean this in a bad way, but I don't feel like barbecue is as big up in Philadelphia like it is down here in the South. Absolutely. So when, you know, if you said the word barbecue to me at um, 10 years old, 12 years old, I think of hot dogs and hamburgers. I think of burnt chicken. I think of the Weber kettle. You know, my dad would have a Weber kettle in the backyard, but we also had a little gas grill. Um, my first experience cooking outdoors, I was seven years old and I heard my dad and my grandfather talking about cooking, we called crayfish in the North crawfish. They were just stream in streams, freshwater streams. And my grandfather was telling my dad that you can cook crayfish in a coffee can. So we got home from my grandfather's. I opened up a coffee can, popped it open. It was old metal cans, you know, took, took the top off. Dumped all the coffee in the trash, cleaned it out, filled it with water, built a little wood fire in the backyard, stole the matches out of my parents' drawer, and went down to the stream, caught some crayfish, and started cooking them and eating them. And my dad came home. He's like, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> he, I stole matches. I dumped out the whole freaking pot of, or can of coffee, and I'm cooking crayfish in the backyard. But he was, like, kind of proud of him for doing this, you know, at the same time. Um, and that was where my love for cooking started but then i had this italian background from my mother's side of the family that was just the the church was across the street from my grandmother's house we had great aunts and uncles and one big square block so people filtered in after church 30 40 50 60 people and my grandmother was always prepared with all kinds of food and i would 
sit there and help her because it meant I missed church, right? I had to miss church to cook, so that was my excuse. <laughs> that was your excuse, helping your grandmother? Yeah. Well, but I'm I, sure how old were you then, though? Well, uh, probably anywhere from, like, 8 to 12. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I wasn't really paying attention to church anyway. Yeah, that's but right. But I paid more attention to cooking. Oh, that's good. Yeah. And so is that between your grandmother, that feeling you kind of got with her, helping her, that kind of maybe fueled some of the catering side that y'all do now? Oh, absolutely. You know, feeding the masses. Absolutely. And so, you know, you have your own line of barbecue products and now pizza products. Yes. So what was the turning point to, to for you to just to say, you know what, I need a barbecue rub to market? Or what was the – it was the barbecue rub was the first thing you brought, the what, having a nice day – uh, Rub, <laughs> a nice day. Having a nice day. Having a having a barbecue. Having a barbecue. Having a barbecue. Well, it was barbecue Bob. So Fred kind of said, "All right, you're barbecue Bob." Right? There was probably thirty other barbecue Bobs already out there, but um, he was shotgun Fred, and he's like, "You're you're my sidekick, barbecue Bob." So I just went with the barbecue Bob thing. When we started catering in 2011, my wife was like trying to come up with fun names for a barbecue catering company. And she's like, well, we always say we're having a barbecue. Come over. We're having a barbecue. So that's where she came up with the having a barbecue. Having a barbecue. Barbecue Bob's having a barbecue. Having a nice day. You know, having a nice day. Having whatever a nice you, day. Whatever. Um, so that worked for a while. We've transitioned since then. We're Bob Trudenack brand. and um, But it, it was, it stuck. And people remembered it. And, you know, we did really well catering through the years. We're still catering. It's still an aspect of our business along with the sauces and seasonings. But my first product was actually a barbecue sauce. It was, it was barbecue Bob's original sauce. And I came up with the recipe, got it to a co-packer. He made me like 10 cases and I was on my way to the world food championship in Vegas, 2013. And I said, just get me like one case so I can bring it with me so I can try it. And he got it to me in time. I put it on my ribs, and I got first place in ribs. And then I knew I was I was hooked. Like, okay, let's start making a whole line of products. You know, I was just super excited that something I created kind of related to other people, and they enjoyed it. I understand that feeling. Yeah, of course you do. So that's where it all started. Wow. Yeah. Well, and, and now um, you've been in the business how long? So... Yeah, it was 24, 25 years. And so From the very start, like but even before the sauce and season, yeah. just in the barbecue industry. And so now how long have you been basically your own boss? You kind of broke away from Yeah, Google. yeah, yeah. So we parted ways. Um, it's been almost two years. Almost two years. So it's kind of in its infancy. Well, you're into that, that two year. You've been traveling a lot and running yeah. the roads and right. all that. And I remember those days. I yeah. know you and Mo, y'all teach a lot of classes. And how many of those classes have y'all taught together? Oh, God. I think our first class we taught together was in, believe it or not, in Germany. And we were in a big old warehouse. And they were a barbecue distributor for all kinds of, like, Meadow Creek products and sauces and seasonings. And we went over to, to do a contest. It was a 117 contest. And they said, while you're over here, why don't you and Mo do a class and we had the place packed and you know we knew what we were talking about but we weren't organized as teachers but we kind of let it go and just our camaraderie together everybody recognized that and they had a blast and we had a blast and we knew we had a good thing going so from there from that start we just we try to do as many as we can a year I can't even tell you how many we've done because we've done a lot of corporate classes and individual class well over 100 right oh yeah absolutely yeah, yeah. that's a lot of educating barbecue people absolutely is what i yeah. like to say absolutely making the world a better place so going back to your rubs and stuff like that so tell us a little bit about what all you have and how you went from barbecue to pizza yeah um well pizza was always on my mind the italian side was always there even before i got into the barbecue industry um i was making wine i was making beer i was making mustard i've never had this one i haven't made it since like so my daughter's 23 i, I probably haven't made it since maddie was two. Oh wow because my wife's like okay we need room for like diapers and stuff so you can't have 
like vats of wine and beer in closets in our house. So it's that's how long it's been. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. But I started out making beer and wine, making mustards, making hot sauces. I had a whole line of hot sauces that I would like sit on the computer and make labels and name them after my, you know, daughter or me or, you know, whatever I could think of and um, pepper jams. I just, I did it all the time. Cordials. So we have this jar. That's 20 bucks Keith has to put in. Every time his phone rings. phone rang. Did y'all hear it? Mm. Well, that's 20 I owe because there's one phone call. Every time a phone See rings, rude, we get 20 bucks. Um, so I was just, everything I could make, I would make. Even cordials, like uh, Irish creams, mm. things like that. And I would put it in little baskets for people for Christmas, and they would love it. And they're like, why aren't you selling this? I just wasn't ready. So then when I <laughs> saw the chance, after I was in the barbecue industry for a while, and I saw the chance to actually do something commercially, I jumped at it. Um, but I started with the sauce. Then I made my first rub, called it Alpha Rub, being the first. J- just a very general, basic, um, good quality barbecue rub that was well balanced for chicken, for pork, ribs, you know, things like that. Um, and then just kind of went from there. And, you know, I think my line is very uh, simply put to the customer. I have a Seven Bones Beef Rub. I have a steak and burger. I have a wing sauce. You know, I don't think there was a lot of people doing wing sauces in the barbecue industry before I came out with Mighty Mitch's wing sauce, but I was named after my son, Mitch, who just would eat hot sauce on everything. And he just wanted to have, he's like, Dad, we need to make a wing sauce. So we start playing around in the kitchen, adding this, adding that. When he said it was good, that's when I let everybody else try it. We did a couple more tweaks, brought it to market. Really? Um, That's one of our favorite products of yours, believe it or not. Thank you. We love the wing sauce. Yeah, it sells really well. People love it. And then, you know, I was trying to I take and add a lot of stuff to it. No, you don't. like (laughs) What do you add to it, wings? No, wings. That's it. That's it, wings. (laughs) Okay, you got me, man. You got me. You got me. Um, And then it's really, you know, when I come out with a new product, it's based on what, um, not only what we like as a family or a group, of friends, but you know, what makes sense to the general public? What do nine out of 10 people want? That's the way I think. And then when I came out, I always wanted a barbecue or a pizza seasoning. So for years and years and years, I said to my wife, I'm going to come out with a pizza seasoning. She's like, well, what's a pizza seasoning? And I said, you know, you walk into a pizza place and they have a whole tray full of oregano, Mm -hmm. salt, pepper, onion powder, garlic powder, red pepper flake, cheese, all that's crap. It's like, why do I want to put 15 things on my pizza when it can all be in one shaker? And then I started developing that. And I knew it was just simple but delicious. And when you crack that open, like to me, that's like walking into a pizzeria in Little Italy. Or I like it. Your pizza season is really good. Thank you. Thank you. So, yeah, I have the, I have the pizza dry pack dough mix. I have the pizza sauce. I have the pizza seasoning. And I'm working on a new product. So what new product are you working on? You want to say? I don't know if I want to say. Well, is it going to go with the barbecue or the pizza? It's going to be on the pizza side. It's going to be on the pizza side. At least tell us that. It's going to be on the pizza side. Okay. And it's going to be freaking delicious. It already is delicious. I already had the first samples made. And uh, I just don't want to say what it is yet. I think I, have I had it before? You may have. I think I did. I'm not sure. And we tested it at Memphis May or something, or did you? Um, is that what you put on that pizza at Memphis and May? No. I told you it was that, but it wasn't. He lied. I lied. You see, you owe $20 in a jar now. That's fine. No, that's I'm, a different jar. We don't have that. Oh, jar. I made pizza at Memphis and May. Yeah, you going to make pizza again Did you like year? the pizza at Memphis and May? Did you have pizza? I think I... Like, Don't say no. No, I think I did get like one piece. You only got one slice? I think I only got there one was a slice. Lot, you had a lot of people there. And well, they were all standing in line. This year, we're going to do pizza a little bit different. We need to get a, no, a bigger alpha oven or yeah. get them to send us another one where we'll have two mm-hmm. and we can run dual pizzas. Right. I think that you did it on a night that we left a little early is what happened. Well, we had like and we had responsibility, you started right? It, it was literally the, the night of turn-ins. Yeah, yeah, we need to do that another night. We yeah, I think we left a little night. early right. because we because he had to be back so early the next morning. So yeah, right. I think that's what happened. But I think I did get one slice. It was good. The people who had it loved it. 
So you cooking with us at Memphis again this year? Yes. And you're, we're going to finish off at Wings and at Beef. Y'all, you got a perfect score last time. I did, in Wings and Beef. In Wings and Beef. But we didn't fall first. We we kind of like the – whatever that – however they do that toy, coin yeah, toss Yeah, it's thing. the coin flip and the computer thing generated. Yeah, I don't but we did tie – we had perfect scores in both categories. And I did finish those Wings in the pizza oven. Yeah. They were like super crispy. So that's kind of how – Back to that, how we kind of became friends with you, really. I know that you guys had talked before that, but or maybe that's just how I became friends with you. But, you know, Heath kind of invited you, like, hey, why don't you come to Memphis in May? And yeah, you actually think, well, did. He had worked for yeah. Guru, and I yeah, needed some yeah. Guru parts. And then, well, you would call me all the time. Sucked yeah. you in. Kind of like, since. that's how I met Mo, too, is he would yeah, call me yeah. a barbecue guru. Well, there was a certain point where, like, I wasn't answering phones anymore, but everybody would still call for me. And then people would get upset that I wasn't on the phone. I was in a meeting or discussing, you know, R&D or, like, something maybe a little more important. But um, a lot of people were like, well, I want to talk to Bob. And then I wasn't on that phone anymore, so I'd have to call back. But I think you and I officially, like, had some time together in, was it Orange Beach, Alabama? It may have been. The World Food, maybe? When yeah, we World Food there. Championship. And I had supplied all of the um, gurus for the for the there was like a deep south cookers right? yeah the deep south cookers we cooked on the pink there cookers. was a woman's challenge where all these yep. female pitmasters were kicking ass down there and they're all using temperature controls on their um, yeah. deep souths yes so we I remember that. so you said you need to come to Memphis yeah I did and I together. ended up calling you on the phone after that and you come and uh, yeah. and cook with us and you've been cooking with us every year since yeah and fun. what year was that. I don't know. Is that 2013, 20? No, it was 2014. It's probably been 15? seven years or so. It's been a good bit. Yeah. I think my first year with you was the Ice Luge. Oh, jeez. Oh, yeah, I used to oh, do a little bit of party. bring that up? I mean, <laughs> no. where a lot of people, I used to do a little bit of partying at Memphis May. Just a yeah. Bit, just, yeah. A, just a little bit. Yeah. Maybe some Ice Luges. <laughs> I mean, bartenders. Yeah. I don't think. There's been a lot of. I feel like COVID might have canceled out the Ice Luge thing. I don't we, I think we stopped it before COVID. Oh, I think yeah, you but were I'm like, just saying, okay, like, that's bullshit. Let's cook. <laughs> well, I, well, I think we didn't get all these out people of out of our yeah. booth. Right, right. Yeah, we, it was. It's been, we have, we had a ton of years together and just had a great time. I've learned a lot from you. I always learn, right? You all, everybody learns from every, everybody. Right. And it's just been a blessing being with you guys and learning from you and, you know, hanging out with you and having this friendship. It's been awesome. Thank you. Well, so so tell me, what's been one of the the craziest moments at Memphis in May you've witnessed so far? So let's just – it ain't got to be about our team if you don't want it to be. Oh, anyway. gosh. Well, that was probably a long <laughs> probably time. Probably the top of the that list. That was before you had a team. The first year I went to Memphis was 2003. Dude, that was a long time ago. I was still in high school. I was just – I was here selling – I was at Memphis in May just introducing Barbecue Guru products with Fred. And that was probably the wildest year he was here? Well, let's just say there was a lot of beads. <laughs> and there was a lot of... I didn't what, do things that go beads? with No, beads. I didn't do anything weird. I, I'm a married man. I have been married for a long what time. What kind of beads? Like, you know, necklaces. <laughs> oh, well, I didn't know. I mean, you're from Philly. I'm just saying I witnessed stuff. I wasn't a part of anything, right? You didn't catch that, did you? No. I said, well, I didn't know you are from Philly. <laughs> wow. Uh, I mean, yeah, I don't know if it was arm, arm beads or what. What are you talking about? I don't think that's what <laughs> you were know. implying at all. No. Is this all going to go on? Is this going to be edited out, right? Probably no, not. No, this is all on camera here, bud. <laughs> no, there were no beads or anything like that. <laughs> we don't do that in Philly all the time. I'm going to tell you, though, y'all really, steak sandwiches, we need to discuss steak sandwiches in Philadelphia. Like Philly cheesesteaks? Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, can I start this conversation? You go ahead. Because a Philly cheesesteak is shaved ribeye, right? Mm -hmm. And you can put one of three cheeses on it, provolone, whiz, or Cooper Sharp, in my opinion. That's it. That's it. You don't put cheddar on there. You don't put Munster. You don't put Munster. whatever the hell other cheese you can find everywhere else in the country. That doesn't go on a cheesesteak. The only pepper that ever gets put on a cheesesteak is cherry pepper. They come out of a jar. They're soaked in whatever they're soaked in. Olive oil, whatever. And vinegar. Yeah. And fried onions. You can go raw and you can go fried onion. And it's got to be a good Philly roll. That's it. So diced onions. You do fried. mushrooms, sautéed mushrooms. Diced what? 
those out of a onions, can. Onions, that's too. fried onions. That's what you're talking well, about. Well, yeah, but it's sauteed onions. You're not talking about deep fried onions. No, I'm talking about on a flat top. Yes. Yeah. Cooked on a flat top and caramelized. Yeah. 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 But that's it. You can't be putting bell peppers on a cheesesteak. No bell peppers. You can't be putting onions and mushrooms and provolone cheese, right? You can't if you want to. That's fine. Well, I mean, that's what I done, and I got killed for it. Are you sure you didn't put anything else on it? No, but the only thing I did do different. Back up. Oh, it wouldn't provolone. No, on that you used one. American cheese. I yeah, think. I used American cheese. But, I made American. American. but he said it's his version. He didn't say like he said it was my this version. Is straight out of Philly. I didn't. That's the only thing I had at home. <laughs> right, but I just took some milk and some butter and heated up. I think you did threw some in other some stuff American in. cheese. No, I used a different type of meat. I used sliced New York strip, really marbled up New York strip because they didn't have any ribeye. Okay, and that's fine. But next time, make sure you get the ribeye first before you do the video. <laughs> you know what? If I'll you, send you ribeye. If you or anybody in Philadelphia could pick out the difference, if you had a legitimate sandwich maker in Philadelphia and I mixed up the meats behind my back, right. nobody could pick it out whether it was made out right. of that New York strip or that ribeye face, both well marble. And that's fine, but here's where you went wrong. Where? You told people you used New York strip. You could have said it was ribeye. Well, that just goes to my character. I ain't going to bullshit <laughs> you about it. I'm going to tell you what I found and what Costco had. They don't sell shaved ribeye. They, they sell shaved New York strip. You didn't wash okay. that meat either. You remember that Oh, comment? my God. You don't wash meat? Oh. Some people put their Some people shaved meat under the sink and no, rinse it off. No. You have to wash Wait. it, according no. to some of our commenters. That's ridiculous. It's in the Bible. And it's in the Bible is what <laughs> one person said. What they say? You have to wash yeah, the meat. No. no, we're not washing meat. Sorry. At least not when we're cooking. Maybe when you take a shower. I mean, I wash a little bit of hair off of it. Uh, deer meat, you know, if some hair got on it. That's or, fine. You know, if you have a hunting. piece of whole meat, if you have a piece of whole meat, like when you're deer hunting and you butcher your own deer, which I do all the time. Yeah. Hopefully you'll do it this week if you can shoot straight at my farm. I can shoot straight. You got a gun that shoots straight? <laughs> you won't put any money on I it? I cannot wait to get in the deer stand. I'm very excited. This is like. I'm not getting in with you. No, that's fine. All right. <laughs> I didn't know where you were going with that. <laughs> I mean, sure? I might need a shoulder massage <laughs> while I'm sitting there waiting for a deer to come by. Um, but, no, I think, yes, people from Philly are, and I've lived there a long time. Not that I was born and raised in Philly, but I've been there a very long time, and I'm born and raised in Pennsylvania. We're, we're particular about things, and that's fine. But I do love creative cooking. See, I'm a creative cook. I make a Cuban. It may not be what a Cuban really is, but it's my version of it, and I get that, and I understand that. But a Philly cheesesteak is almost, like, sacred. You, you have to kind of, like, follow It's kind of like barbecue in the South. Well, but, there, yes. Let me ask you something. Does There's anybody retire and move up north? I'm sorry? Does anybody retire and move up north? <sighs> no. That's that's very true. And I know I'm not I from a barbecue. you on that one. I know I'm not from a barbecue state, but... It became a passion of mine, and I learned, and I traveled, and I cook great barbecue. Oh, you do. You cook great barbecue. But I'm not, like, I'm not throwing, um, I'm not barbecuing scrapple or anything and calling it barbecue. Now, so, you just brought up a good point. What exactly is scrapple? Uh, actually, nobody knows for sure. <laughs> I mean, well, I'd it's like a, to know. It's, it's Do you a, even know what he's talking about, Scrapple? Scrapple? I mean, I know. Kind of like I've, the mint. It's like mince meat, right? I mean. So, uh, Scrapple like is. um Spam or something? Scrapple is like. Um, Spam's good. It's like Bigfoot no, or um, Bigfoot? The, the Loch Ness Monster. Oh. It's oh. Nobody really knows if it's real or not. No, but Scrapple is actually um, cooked down pork parts, all kinds of parts. Could be from the head. Could be from, you know, scrap parts. Hence the scrapple. Sounding more and more like spam to me. Okay. So then it's, so, and I've never made it homemade. So it's cooked down pork and then they put buckwheat, they put spices, mm. and then it's formed into a, in a loaf pan and cooled. Right. So now it's, now you have a loaf of this boiled meat with wheat in it and spices. Now you cut it into sections. Like hog head cheese. And you pan fry it. There's a couple versions of this around the country. This is just a Pennsylvania Dutch thing. It's pan fried. So it's crispy on the outside and then a little soft on the inside. But it's, uh, if you like, uh, like liverwurst or if you like pâtés or things like that, you'll love scrapple. If you don't like those things, 
you probably won't like scrap- probably Scrapple. Won't like it. You're yeah. right, though. I mean, I like liver cheese every once in a while. I used to eat it as a kid. Yeah, so I think uh, you would actually really I enjoy mean, it. Bro- if it's, I've had all of that. But it's got to be cooked properly. You can't be, like, throwing it in, like, lightly cooking it in a pan. It's got to be hard, fried hard. What's the craziest thing off a hog you've ate? You brain, ever, uh, eyeballs? Brains? You done the brains? Done the brains. Smeared, brains and eggs? Smeared, well, I've smeared the brains on toast at a barbecue contest. No, I hadn't done that. It's still, it tastes like pork. No, it's I've just, done brains and eggs plenty of times. My grandmother back when I was a kid. I was, I was dared to eat the eyeball. Oh, I've seen uh, four or five people did? do that. It tastes we like pork, too. The, the whole damn thing tastes like pork. Well, you know, there's a guy on uh, on, on Boar's Night Out, uh, Joey. Uh, uh, what's Joey's uh, last name? Uh, he was in the beer business with Bag us. of Donuts? Uh, no, uh, Joey. Joey uh, Bag of Donuts. I don't I know. Joey Strong. Name. Joey Strong. Okay. And uh, he does it every year. It's like a tradition. Maybe somebody he digs eyeballs out of their pig and eats it for like good yeah. luck. I mean, I only did it once, and oh, I really that. have no desire to do it again. I, what's I, the weirdest I, thing you've ever eaten? Not pork related, just whatever. Well, on purpose or by accident or both. So when I was in Germany, I was brought to a restaurant for lunch, and they gave us cold beers. Well, and I was told that the host was going to order food. I don't know if I should say this. And um, we had a couple beers, and I'm looking around, and there's like all kinds of like farm scenes and horse and buggies and. And then they bring the meal, and it's sour broughton, which is like a shaved beef, and there's like, um, it almost looks like Salisbury steak with like a gravy and potatoes and all that. And we're eating. I'm not going to say what's like, going through my mind. This is delicious. Mind, but what is it? Like, why is this so secret? He's calling it a secret lunch. It was horse. So it was horse meat. So we're eating horse meat. I didn't realize I was eating horse meat. Oh, you've had it several times here in the U.S., I'm sure. You just didn't know. <laughs> I mean, it. Maybe. You just Maybe I it. did. Maybe that was my black and blue so burger. You, that's the one thing to. you didn't mean to eat. I didn't mean to eat that. I okay. would not say I want to go eat horse. That's just not me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So what's the one you Hail silver. To? Um, I mean, when I was 12, I went out and shot squirrels and made my mother make squirrel stew. That's she didn't want to make it. Not but, unusual down here. Um, Man, fried squirrel is good. And great. I mean, I've never had it, but... So, I mean, there's probably things I've eaten. Um, I've eaten rattlesnake. Was that your phone? No, it was not mine. Was, uh, well, what's the, what's the craziest thing you've ever eaten? Probably nothing too out of the ordinary for me. Um, you've eaten raw Wagyu beef, I know. Well, that's not crazy, uh, though. No, um, I, don't I know. ate some of that weird stuff. Um, when we were in Austin, Texas, and Leanne took us to that restaurant. You remember it, had, it, was, like, it was like a butcher shop. But it was a oh, yeah. the bone marrow, ra- bone marrow. No, nah, well, I ate that, but that's not. It had remember that whole yeah, like board she ordered uh, oh, it had it, all kinds it had of hog, crazy. It had stuff. hog head cheese on yeah. it. Uh, it had um, it had all kinds of stuff. Just different cured meats and strange. stuff like that. No. Oh, I swallowed a stuff. wolf spider once. <laughs> swallowed a wolf spider. Yeah. It, it well, they just, say you swallow spiders and hairs your whole life. I mean, it's over a mile of hair. That, that was say another you thing I didn't intend to eat that I ate. It was huge. Pulled it out the next morning. A what? Pulled, wait, what? It, I didn't actually. I didn't wait, act, wait. I didn't actually swallow it. It was in my mouth. It was gross. Okay, that's not where my camping. mind went. I was camping. Yeah. No, I didn't pull it out that end. <laughs> that's where my mind no, went. No, no, no. He was no. camping. <laughs> oh, <laughs> the story gets it. a lot weird. <laughs> You're like, well, I got no, it out the next morning. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> well, that's what it was. Okay. All right then. Yeah. I don't Moving know. on. <laughs> yeah, so. I have a question. What's yes. your uh, favorite? Of your own product. Which product's your favorite? Wow. What Changing is my the subject. favorite of my own product? Yeah. You had to pick one. Interesting. Gosh. Nobody's life's on the line. I know. I know. But I'm just saying, if I had one product. It ain't like picking between your kids, is it? <laughs> kind well, of. it kind of is, because one's named after my daughter. The other one's named after my son. I would choose either one of them. And the other one's named after my wife. The bourbon sauce. Oh, the bourbon sauce. It's named after my wife. My bourbon sauce is really good. I've oh, I know it is. And yeah. I'm very proud of that. I use real bourbon in that, real Kentucky bourbon in that sauce. And um, it really is one of my fa- my favorite. I think it is my favorite. I like it. Yeah, it's really good. Yeah, um, so and I put that answer. I put that on chicken. I put it on ribs. I put it on seafood, scallops, shrimp, all that stuff. I ain't never tried it on yeah, scallops. Yeah, we'll say my bourbon sauce, Mama T's bourbon sauce. So... 
I know you're coming back to help us at Memphis in May. Yes. And then after you go home from here, I'll see you again in January yes. at the Wind Pigs Fly event. Absolutely. In Cape that Girardeau. Is so much fun. So for anybody that does not know about this event in Cape Girardeau, uh, Smoking Brothers Pellet Grills puts on this event. It's an indoor barbecue bash. Uh, and they kind of pick different team captains and stuff and pair you up with veterans of a it might be firefighters, it might be paramedics, it might be nurses. somebody from the army, it might be nurses. Uh, I had marine vetics, uh, medics with me. Marine I had medics. army veterans and uh, firefighters. Yeah. Uh, and so anyway, all kind of first responders cool. up in there. Yep. And uh, raising money. And uh, last year, our team won it. Yes, you did. And um, I heard you cheated. No, I didn't cheat. How hey, you cheat? It's a fundraiser. Oh, that's true. I, I mean, people you, I people drop you. money to sample your food. <laughs> I mean, I heard you were coaxing them with something. No, no, you got to be creative. It's a fundraiser. <laughs> I mean, that's where all y'all need to learn that you got to be creative. You're right. You're right. No, you won fair and square. I mean, but we had they paired us up with the marine marine medics and uh, and things like that, and it, it it's just a, a cool black a cool event to be in Absolutely. january yeah. in the ice cold yeah to be cooking on the inside cooking indoors yeah super cool it uh was... met a lot of great people i can't wait to do it again i'm gonna bring my daughter this year i think mo's coming yeah and i, I think candace is gonna go this year and i'm carrying a couple other people oh, nice. i've got actually uh jake you know barbecue with big jake oh yeah uh, oh jake young yeah. guy on tiktok you know yep yeah and oh, uh he's coming with us awesome uh and so trying to get him out there more, he's wanting to do a few things, so I invited him out. It, it should fantastic. be a really good good event, though. That's I'm really great. looking forward to it. Good. So have you thought about or seen any of this stuff going on with Memphis in May? You know, I just actually heard about all the drama yesterday, so I haven't really had a chance to catch up with everything. I mean, it's basically just two groups or another group now trying to do something downtown versus um, – you know Memphis and May being held at Liberty Park now because you but know same time, same, uh, same time, and I don't yes. I don't know what's going to work out and how it's going to play out. It, you know they're still waiting to announce stuff and do and yeah and go. So who who knows what will uh, happen with all that? Interesting. Me anxious to see and uh, yeah and see how it plays out. Right now I'm going to Memphis and May, so I guess so am I. We'll, we'll see how that works. Yep. So sounds good. What other big plans do you have in 2024? Um, I have a few products coming out. Um, like I said, I don't really want to talk about them yet, and, um, but I'm working on two or three new products. Um, just, well, is it two or three? Well, it's really 10, but my wife says it's gotta be two or three. So it's two or three. <laughs> <laughs> you sound like me now. <laughs> um, most likely two, most likely two products. Um, one on the barbecue side, one on the pizza side and just, you know, really, tr you know, hitting the pavement trying to get the products out into the grocery world and, you know, grow that part of the business. Um, you know, tweaking the catering into more corporate jobs, doing more classes, traveling more places, and spreading the love of barbecue through, you know, like I said, through classes, through demos, through, you know, all of that. Um, anywhere super cool that you're traveling off that you know of yet? Um, anywhere super cool that I'm traveling. Well, Mo, Mo's got some fun stuff that he's got on his plate. Yeah. That I'm coming along with him on. So you should have Mo on, and then he could talk about that. But there's I some, think we will. There's some cool stuff. There's yeah. some really cool. So you're stuff. saying he's cooler than you? Um, no, he's just cool in a different way. He's cool I'm Midwest. I'm cool Philly. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So I guess I am a little cooler. No, I'm kidding. Yeah. <laughs> Here we go talking about football again. <laughs> <laughs> go birds. <laughs> I mean, uh, Philly is looking good this year. I mean, they do look pretty good. I mean, they're not the We're Chiefs. winning games. I'm not going to say we look good. We're winning games. That's right. Most I games. mean, I'm not a huge NFL person. I watch some NFL ball, but I would much rather watch college ball. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that, that game the other night was a little, you know, the Alabama-Georgia game, that was a little wild. Yeah. I, I wish I got to see it. That's the SEC for you, though, baby. Yeah, it is. Exactly. <laughs> you got it. You don't never know what's going to happen. That's right. That's right. Well, it's always good when you are in town and you uh, yeah, were absolutely. able to catch up and see sure. you and all that. And uh, really looking forward to the next few days of hanging out. Oh, we're going to have a uh, great time. Going to do a little deer I hunting, maybe. Wife. I tried to bring my wife. 
She was going to come with me. She's not here? No. 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 no I, I said you. I, it's not my fault. I thought she, she was came. supposed to come with me, and then things got. Things are crazy. She is like the rock of our family. Well, I did not know she did business. not come. I just figured and she was at the hotel or something. Yeah, I wish. Oh, okay. Well, never mind. So she's not going to be here. But I'll get her here next year. We love you, Tammy. We miss you. I'm sure we she want feels you here. Guilty for not coming. Oh, well. I mean. <laughs> Well, things happen. We yes. understand. Yeah. Well, look, man, it's always good to see you. Always good to catch up and shoot the cue with you. Absolutely. And we appreciate you joining us for another episode. Absolutely. Thanks for having me on the show. Oh, yeah. yeah. We'll right. see everybody next week. With another episode of Shooting the Cue. Thank you for tuning in to the Shooting the Cue podcast. If you have any comments or suggestions for future episodes, please feel free to reach out to us on our social media channels or through our website. Don't forget to subscribe to our podcast on your favorite platform. Leave us a review if you enjoyed the show. Until next time, keep shooting the cue.